guys. So today I'm going to be taking some cuttings. Well, I've already taken most of the cuttings, but I'm going to be taking some cuttings and doing some propagating. Um, but this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. As most of you know, I am um, a big fan of propagating in sphagnum. However, I also like to use plugs. Um, and what I have here, these are moss plugs. Uh, they're just made out of like peat moss. Um, and uh, I like these for more of like the, the vining type of uh, plants and whatnot. I also have rock wool plugs um, here, and I usually don't use the rock wool plugs, but I'm going to uh, do a bit of experiment and um, see which one that I actually prefer. So I'll use both of them today. Um, so I'm just gonna take you through the step-by-step -step of how I do um, my propagating with plugs. So uh, the very first thing that I do, it's the same step as when I do um, sphagnum propagating and that is I grab my trusty azos and I'm gonna put some in this cup of water here stir it up real good and then I'm actually going to soak my plugs in the water I'm gonna let them just sit and soak and soak up all of that um, rooting hormone and, and get nice and saturated. So while those soak, um, I'm going to take my cuttings. Now, most of my cuttings I've already taken. I've got some string of pearls, some Hoya curtsii, and some um, string of rubies or ruby necklace, whatever you call it. However, I'm also going to take a couple cuttings off of this linearis right here um, because I want it to full out a little bit more. So I'm going to do that. Need some nice, um, sharp shears and I always spray mine with alcohol prior to cutting um, to help make sure that I don't get any yucky stuff in uh, the cut. So now when looking for the best place to cut you want to make sure that you have exposed nodes. So each one of these little bumps here where the leaves come out those are the nodes. So I'm actually going to cut just underneath that node and I'm going to use this node to root from. So I'm going to snip off that little leaf right there. I'm gonna take another one. I think I'm gonna cut that one right here. And I'm gonna snip off this set of leaves right here so I can use that node for the propagating. All right. So um, I'll have to go through and do the same thing with all of these because I hadn't done it yet. Um, so I'm gonna snip off this lower set of leaves. Now a common rule of thumb generally, not always, but generally, is you can identify a node on a plant based on where the leaves grow. Um, so if there's a set of leaves there, generally speaking, that's a node. Um, on these Hoyas, especially on these curtsy eyes here, you can see they've got a lot of little aerial roots popping out there. Um, so that will also help. You wanna make sure when, you, uh, when you're propagating these, these trailing type plants like this, um, that you that you put them in in the manner that they were growing so you want the the tip that they were actively gro growing from to be sticking out of the plug you don't want to jam that in the plug um it, it'll probably still root but i don't <laughs> it'll take it longer to grow better so this one i'm actually going to cut off two sets just because i want the stem to be a little bit longer so i'm going to go through and uh do that on all of these maybe if i can get them apart Mm. And same thing with these, where the leaves are, there's nodes there. And now this one, it may actually seem like I'm going to be putting it in the wrong direction, but it's not. These, um, these rubies were actually curved upward. They were going upward towards the light. I've got all of my cuttings prepared. I'm going to um, go ahead and get my tray together. So um, what I'm using here is just the basic plastic, um, you know, plug trays and a, um, a seedling tray with no holes. You don't want one with holes because you want it to form um, or act as a reservoir. So you want there to be um, plenty of water to be able to be held in there. 
So I'm actually going to get some perlite down here. And I'm going to put perlite in the bottom of this. Tray and just kind of spread it out and that's going to help them uh, it's going to help keep the drainage but it's also going to help uh, the plugs um, taking the moisture and stuff too so just a little base like that and I'm going to put my seed tray back in right on top of that, like that, and now to get my plugs ready, so um, you want to wring them out a bit, you don't want to completely wring them completely out to where they're dry, um, so there's, you know, still a good amount of water in there, but you do want to wring them out a bit. Now, one thing that I like to do with these moss plugs, because some of these uh, stems on these plants can be really, really uh, brittle and, and jam them down in there, they could snap. So a lot of times I will actually take my shears and I'll go down like that and I'll split it. So that way it opens up like this. So then I will take, we'll start with the linearis. I'll take my linearis, actually, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this is a, uh, some cloning gel. This is my root tech. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of cloning gel on each one of these nodes down here just to give them a little bit of added juice. All right, and so then I'm going to put them in there, make sure the node is fully in contact, and grip them right like that. And then I'm going to take them over here and I'm going to set them into. The tray. Now with these trailing ones, I like to use large trays like this so that that way I can kind of put them across. Um, you'll see why later, but I, uh, I don't want them hanging over. It can cause them to slip out of the uh, the plug. So now I'm going to go through and uh, do the same thing with these curtsy eye cuttings here. And get them all together like that. Oops. There's some of my rooting hormone and just glob it on there. Real good, like so. Bring out my plug. Nip it down the center. Open it up. And sandwich them all in there, right like that. And then in they go. Now I like to make sure that there's um, space between the uh, between them so I don't want to put these right next to you know in in each hole or whatnot because they're trailing they'll touch each other um, now with the pearls I didn't uh, snip off the pearls and the reason why was because pearls just pop off you can literally just kind of pull them right off like that that's easy enough these are thirsty pearls they're a little odd shaped um, slightly neglected but I mean it's about how they thrive anyways honestly Right, and I'm actually gonna put these pearls into one of the rock wool plugs. So give it a little squeeze like that. Now these are already split like that. Put some rooting hormone on there. Stick those right on in there. Squeeze it closed. I'm gonna stick it right about there. And stick that down in there firmly. get my rubies together. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually going to make two plugs um, because like I said, I want to try, I'm going to put one in a moss plug and one in a rock wool plug. So I'm going to put the stuff on there, grab that other rock wool plug, give it a little squeeze. Ugh. Kind of slide that in there. Like that, and stick it down in there firmly. Um, and let me go ahead and get this cut and prepared. All right, get my last little strings of rubies here together. 
brooding gel. And into the plug they go. And I'll pop them right in here. Okay, so now, after that's all done, there's a couple things that you want to do. One, I'll take my leftover watery hormone powder mix here, and I'm going to pour it right on down into that reservoir. And so that's not necessarily just to, uh, to water these. Now, it, they will um, uptake some of the some of the water and stuff to help keep them moist. But what it is, more than anything, is to create um, sort of a moisture barrier or added humidity. I have this nice big lid here um, that I got at Maximum Grow, of course. This one has vents on it, which are really super handy when it comes time for acclimating. Um, so you wanna make sure your vents are closed and you wanna put your lid on top. Now they have um, shorter lids as well, you know, that only come about this high. Um, I like the big one because some of the plants that I use are taller and I need more space. Um, so you'll put this on here and what you'll notice is after a little while it will obviously start to fog up and whatnot. You want that, that's humidity, that's really going to help that root growth. If you can put it in a warm, um, nice bright spot, they will root even faster. I have found with the plugs generally um, within 10 days or so you should be able to see root growth. And the really cool thing is um, with these plugs, once they're rooted and stuff, you pull them out, you, the roots have grown out of the plug, so you can really see it. It's all one thing. You just plop it into your new pot um, with whatever substrate you want, so that's great. After, um, after you know, a couple weeks, when you, when you know that the plants are rooted and stuff, when you're using these lids like this, you want to make sure that you acclimate the plants slowly, um, and that goes for when you're germinating seeds or doing any type of propagation or germinating with this sort of situation. If you just take this off and just remove it, um, it's gonna shock those plants really badly um, because it's gonna go from a really, really humid, really controlled environment inside this to a really unstable environment outside of it. So um, you definitely wanna make sure that you acclimate it slowly. Now, if you have one of the shorter ones and it doesn't have the vents, that's okay. Um, you can literally just prop it open slightly. You take um, a, a pin or anything and just kind of stick it in the corner to allow some airflow in there. And each day, put something a little bit bigger, um, you know, to where it's opened up a little bit more. After about the third day, you can remove the dome all together and they'll be fine. Um, with this with this dome, how I can do is I can open one of this the vents one day, open the other vent the next day, and then take the whole thing off the last day so that that way they acclimate slowly and they don't die. <laughs> Um, so that's about it with, uh, with the plugs. Um, it's definitely a really good uh, method with, like I said, when you're doing these smaller um, vine type plants because uh, it holds them nice and tightly and it's just easier to deal with. It's kind of hard to work those in with a cup of sphagnum because they are just so fragile um, and so easy to break. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Hope you learned something. See you later.